At that time, Shariputra said to the Buddha, World honored one, I now have no further doubts or regrets, for I have personally received a prediction of Anuttara Samyaksambodhi in the presence of the Buddha. In the past, when those twelve hundred who have now attained self mastery were still at the stage of study, the Buddha always taught and inspired them, saying, My Dharma can lead one to leave behind birth, old age, sickness, and death, and attain ultimate nirvana. Those in need of study, and those beyond study alike, believed they were liberated from the views of self, existence, and non-existence, and so forth, and declared that they had attained nirvana. Yet now, in the presence of the world-honored one, hearing what they have never heard before, they fall prey to doubts and confusion. Good indeed, world-honored one. I hope that you will explain the causes and conditions for the sake of the fourfold assembly to clear away their doubts and regrets. At that time, the Buddha said to Shariputra, Have I not said before that all Buddhas, world-honored ones, expediently teach the Dharma by means of various causes and conditions, analogies and explanations for the sake of Anuttara Samyaksambodhi? All of these teachings are intended to teach bodhisattvas. However, Shariputra, I shall now make use of a parable to elaborate on my meaning, for all who are wise gain understanding through parables. Shariputra, suppose that in a country, a city, or a village, there lives a great elder, aged and worn, of limitless wealth, possessing many fields, houses, and servants. His house, while spacious, has only one door. Many people, one hundred, two hundred, even five hundred of them, dwell within. Its halls and chambers are decaying and old. Its walls are crumbling. The pillars are rotting at their bases. The beams and ridge poles are in danger of collapse. All at once a fire breaks out, spreading throughout the house and setting it ablaze. The elder's children, ten, twenty, even thirty, are also inside the house. The elder, seeing the flames rising on all four sides, is greatly alarmed and thinks, Although I am able to escape safely through this burning doorway, all my children are inside the burning house, happily attached to their amusements, unaware and unknowing, neither alarmed nor fearful. A fire is pressing in upon them, causing searing pain. However, they remain unconcerned and have no desire to find a way out. Shariputra, the elder, then thinks, my body and arms have the strength to carry them in a cloth bag or on a table out of the house. He further reflects, But this house has only one door, which is also small and narrow. My children are young, immature, and naive. Attached to and engrossed in their place of play, they may fall and be burned in the fire. I must alert them to this frightening situation of the house catching on fire and insist that they hurry and come out before they get burned. So, thinking, he says to his children, Come out, all of you, quickly! Although the sympathetic father coaxes them with kind words, the children continue to happily indulge in their play, refusing to do as he asks. They are neither alarmed nor afraid, and have not the slightest intention of leaving. What is more, they don't even know what is meant by fire, what is meant by house, or what is meant by loss. They merely run about here and there, looking playfully at their father. Then the elder thinks, the house is already ablaze with a great fire. If my children and I do not get out in time, we shall certainly be burned. I should not devise a skillful means so that my children can escape this disaster. Knowing that his children's predispositions and preferences are such that they will definitely be delighted and attracted to various precious toys and exquisite playthings, the father says to them, The things that you love to play with are rare and difficult to get. If you do not take them now, you will certainly regret it later. 
Now, right outside the door, you will find such delightful things. A variety of sheep carts, deer carts, and ox carts for you to play with. Quickly, get out of this burning house, and I will give you whatever you want. Then the children, hearing their father speak of these precious playthings which suit their wishes exactly, eagerly push and shove one another aside in a mad scramble, all fighting to get out of the burning house. Then, seeing that all his children have gotten out safely and are sitting on the ground at the crossroads, no longer in danger, the elder is greatly relieved and filled with joy. Then the children say to their father, Father, the fine playthings you promised us a while ago, the sheep carts, the deer carts, and the ox carts, please give them to us now. Shariputra, at that time, the elder, without partiality, gives to each of his children a great cart. Each cart is high and wide, adorned with many intertwining strands of jewels encircled by railings and surrounded on four sides by hanging bells. Further, each is covered with a canopy decorated with various rare and precious treasures and strung with jeweled cords from which flowered tassels hang down. Every cart is furnished with elegant layered mats and red cushions. Each is yoked to a white ox with lustrous clean skin and a beautiful body muscular and strong. The oxen walk with a steady, even gait as swiftly as the wind. Each cart is guarded by many servants. And why is this? That great elder has limitless wealth and various treasuries filled to overflowing. Then he reflects, My wealth is unlimited, so I should not give my children small or inferior carts. After all, these youngsters are my children, whom I love equally, without any favoritism. Since I have such great carts made of the seven treasures, infinite in number, I should give a cart to each of them impartially. Why? The carts would not run out when given to all the people in the country, let alone when given just to my children. Meanwhile, all of the children are riding around on the great carts, experiencing what they never have before, beyond their original hopes. Chariputra, what do you think? When that elder gave great carts adorned with precious treasures equally to all his children, was he guilty of lying or not? Chariputra replied, No, world-honored one. The elder was only trying to help his children get out of the fire alive. This cannot be considered lying. Why? In escaping with their lives, they have already gained a fine plaything. What is more, he was employing skillful means to rescue them from the burning house. World honored one, if that elder had not given them even so much as a single small cart, he would still not have been lying. Why? because the elder previously had thought, I shall use skillful means to lead my children out. For this reason, he was free from deception. How much more so because the elder, knowing his own wealth to be limitless and wishing to benefit his children equally, gave each of them a great cart. The Buddha said to Shariputra, Good indeed, good indeed. It is just as you say, Shariputra, the Tathagata is similar to this elder in that he is a father to all living beings. He has put an absolute end to all fear, distress, worry, ignorance, darkness, and obstacles. He has brought to perfection limitless knowledge and vision, powers and fearlessness. He has great spiritual might and the power of wisdom. He is replete with the paramitas of skillful means and wisdom. He is extremely kind and compassionate, never growing weary of doing good deeds that benefit everyone. Thus he is born in the old, dilapidated burning house of the three realms. 
in order to save living beings from birth, old age, sickness, death, worry, grief, suffering, distress, ignorance, darkness, and the fires of the three poisons, he teaches them and inspires them to attain Anuttara Samyaksam Bodhi. He sees all living beings scorched by the birth, old age, sickness, death, worry, grief, suffering, and distress. They also undergo various kinds of suffering because of their pursuit of the five desires and of wealth and profit. Furthermore, because of their grasping and craving, they presently go through various kinds of suffering and will thereafter suffer in the hells, among the animals, or among the hungry ghosts. If born in the heavens or among human beings, they will suffer from poverty and distress from being separated from those they love, from being together with those they hate, and from various other troubles. Engulfed in this morass, however, living beings enjoy their pleasures, unaware, unknowing, unalarmed, and unafraid. They do not grow dissatisfied, nor do they seek liberation. They run about in the burning house of the three realms, and although they encounter tremendous suffering, they are not concern. Shariputra, having seen this, the Buddha then thinks, I am the father of living beings. I should rescue them from trouble and suffering and give them the limitless, boundless joy of a Buddha's wisdom so that they may find pleasure in it. Shariputra, the Tathagata then reflects, if I, for the sake of all living beings, merely use spiritual powers and wisdom power, but cast aside skillful means when praising the Tathagata's knowledge and vision, powers and fearlessness, living beings will not be saved. Why? These living beings have yet to transcend birth, old age, sickness, death, grief, and misery. While being scorched in the burning house of the three realms, how can they understand the wisdom of the Buddha? Shariputra, in spite of his strong body and arms, the elder did not use his strength. Instead, he earnestly used skillful means to rescue his children from the disaster of the burning house. Afterwards, he gave each a great cart adorned with precious treasures. The Tathagata uses a similar approach. Although he has powers and fearlessness, he does not use them. Instead, he resorts to wisdom and skillful means to rescue living beings from the burning house of the three realms, teaching them the three vehicles, the vehicles of the Shravakas, the Pratyeka Buddhas, and the Buddhas. Hence, he says to them, You should not take pleasure in dwelling in the burning house of the three realms. Do not crave vulgar and inferior forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and tangible objects. If you attach to them greedily and passionately, you will be burned by them. You should quickly escape the three realms, for then you shall attain the three vehicles, the vehicles of the Shravakas, the Pratyeka Buddhas, and the Buddhas. I now give you my pledge for this, and it shall never prove false. All you need to do is practice vigorously with earnest effort. The Tathagata uses these skillful means to persuade and lead all living beings. He further says, You should all know that the dharmas of the three vehicles are praised by the sages, for they will make you free, unbound, self-reliant, and content. Riding upon these three vehicles, one will find joy and pleasure in qualities free of outflows, including the roots and powers, the factors of awakening, the path, the dhyanas, the liberations, the samadhis, and the like. One will then gain limitless peace, tranquility, and joy. Shariputra, suppose there are living beings who are inherently intelligent and who, having heard the Dharma from the Buddha, the world-honored one, believe and uphold it and strive forward with diligence, wanting to quickly escape the three realms and seek nirvana for themselves, they are those of the Shravaka vehicle. They are like the children who sought the sheep carts and thereby escaped from the burning house. 
Suppose there are living beings who, having heard the Dharma from the Buddha, the world-honored one, believe and uphold it and strive forward with diligence in quest of innate wisdom, delight in solitude and enjoy stillness, and, deeply knowing the causal conditions of all phenomena, they are those of the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. They are like the children who left the burning house in order to receive the deer carts. Suppose there are living beings who have heard the Dharma from the Buddha, the world-honored one, believe and uphold it, and strive forward with diligence in quest of omniscient wisdom, the Buddha's wisdom, innate wisdom, untaught wisdom, the Tathagata's knowledge and vision, and his powers and fearlessness. They offer sympathy and comfort to countless living beings. They also benefit gods and humans and reach out to rescue all. Such beings are bodhisattvas of the great vehicle. Because they seek this vehicle, they are referred to as mahasattvas. They are like the children who sought the ox carts and thereby escaped from the burning house. Shariputra just as that elder, who, seeing all his children safely escape the burning house to a place free of terror, considers his own incalculable wealth and then gives each of his children a great cart, just so the Tathagata, in the same way, acts as the father of all living beings. When he sees countless kotis of living beings using the gateway of the Buddha's teaching to escape the suffering of the three realms, leave the fearsome and dangerous paths, and attain the bliss of nirvana, the Tathagata then has this thought. I have the Dharma treasury of all Buddhas, including limitless, boundless wisdom, powers, and fearlessness. All of these living beings are my children. I shall give each of them a great vehicle. I shall not bring any of them to attain nirvana only for themselves, but shall lead them all to attain the parinirvana attained by the Tathagata. These living beings who have escaped from the three realms shall be rewarded with playthings such as the Buddha samadhis and liberations, all of which are of one character and one kind, are praised by the sages, and can bring forth supreme, pure, wondrous, bliss. Shariputra, just as that elder is not guilty of lying in first enticing his children with three carts, and then later giving them each only a great cart adorned with treasures, supremely steady and comfortable. The Tathagata, likewise, is not being deceptive in first teaching the three vehicles to entice living beings, and later delivering them only by means of the great vehicle. What is the reason? The Tathagata has the Dharma treasury of limitless wisdom, powers, and fearlessness, and is able to give to all living beings the great vehicle Dharma. Not all living beings, however, are able to accept it. Shariputra, you should know that for this reason, through the power of skillful means, the Buddhas, in teaching the Buddha vehicle, speak of three vehicles.